The world loves being on the water for sports, for leisure, and for supporting the world's economy. Critical for protecting our nation's ports and for fueling our passions, let's see how one company is meeting the demands of the boating industry. Let's go with Intrepid Power Boats on the water. Last week on Intrepid Power Boats on the Water, we were in Fort Pierce, Florida for the Mercury Bash for Cash. Team Old School pulled in a nearly 40-pound kingfish in really rough seas to finish fourth in this prestigious tournament. This tournament leads up to the two-day SKA National Finals. Well, going into the Nationals, we really thought we had the fish dialed in. Uh, the first day we caught a 29 pound fish, which was a decent fish. Um, you know, there were some bigger fish, but there was a lot of people that had zeros. I mean, some world-class fishermen out here that just couldn't get on the fish or couldn't find them. So we were catching a lot of fish, but we only got a 29 pounder. So we figured we were in the right spot. The team also boated angler Morgan Keene's first sailfish. We're sure Morgan will cherish these photos and this memory for years to come. Yeah, it, anytime you get a sailfish that jumps out, starts walking on the top of the water, and, and it's just such an adrenaline, uh, adrenaline ru rush when you catch one of those kind of fish. Generally, we would have probably broken it off because we're really not targeting that species, and again, it's all business when it comes down to kingfishing, but with it being his first time, we figured we'd go ahead and take that little bit of time. All intrepids are one of a kind, all the way down to the paint schemes. Customers are free to choose and create custom paint to match their personality or lifestyle. So one of the neat things here at Intrepid is when I do plant tours, you know, I take customers through and I explain all the different processes and what it takes to build an Intrepid. And one of the things that blows everybody away always is the paint and the paint process. And, you know, I start talking about the story about how, you know, we've, we brought in engineers from the paint company to figure out a more efficient or better way because it takes us so long to paint a boat and what that process is for us. Once you talk a little bit about all the different steps it takes to paint one of our hulls. Oh, in the beginning, the prep process is the most important. We longboard every boat, we primer every boat, we rebock every boat, then we go through our steps, we go through a color coat process, which consists of two to three coats of color. We go through a process of five to six coats of clear. Then we build it down. When we go to sand and uh, get the boat ready for its final, we start with like 400 grit, take it all the way to 5,000. Now in that process, it takes a little bit of time. As you can see in the background, that's what we're doing right now. We're buffing one side and you know, how many times do we sand the entire hull with all the different grits? Uh, probably 10 to 12 times. That's a, lot. That's a lot of man hours and a lot of work. But the outcome is we had 3M come in with a 90 degree gloss meter. 90 is an A. We've gone through 95, 96, 98 gloss readings, which are almost unheard of because of the depth of the clear and how smooth we get the hulls. The trick is try to get all the ripples out. The smoother the hull, the higher the gloss. But it's a lot of work. Because what a lot of people don't understand is, even though fiberglass parts come out of a mold, 
they never repeat. You know, they, they come out and they have some kind of distortion, some kind of imperfections in it. So what we do is we hand block the entire hull to get those imperfections out. That's why when you go to a boat show or you go to a, a boat dealer and you look at different boats and you look at the hull sides, you'll see that washboard or ripple or, or that uh, a little bit of distortion in that paint. That's because it's, it's not, it hasn't been blocked out and it does have imperfections, but we go through a long process to make sure that we get them all out. And that's why we have such a reputation for such a great finish on the outside of our boat. It's because the guys like Bill DeCosta and the paint crew, they do all this handwork every time that it, they look as beautiful as they do. Every step of the process is handled in-house here at Intrepid. This enables them to control the quality and make sure it meets the high Intrepid standards. This show is being brought to you by Ashland, proud manufacturer of AME Premium Resins and MaxGuard Premium Gel Coats for the world's best boat builders. Seven Marine, the most powerful outboards on the planet. Electronics Unlimited, world innovators in marine electronics. Vetus Maxwell, creator of boat systems. Big blue runners are usually caught offshore and the seas are just not going to permit it today. So they are relying on local networks and the Fish Brain app to locate areas where bait fish can be caught in close to shore. They'll be forced to use mullet and shad, changing their technique for day one of this tournament. Prep work for tournament fishing is a, a major thing. Uh, there's a lot that goes into the prep work. Um, you know, you, you don't just get on a boat and everything's ready for you to go. So, um, you know, we've got certain individuals that have different responsibilities in, in prep work. And, um, you know, we tie our own kingfish rigs and, you know, th that consumes a lot of time. And, you know, we re-spool our rods uh, quite often so that we have complete fresh line on our reels so that we don't have to worry about snags or breaks. Um, you know, and then obviously the, the days before the tournament where we're, you know, out catching bait and uh, trying to scout the areas and, you know, putting the time in to, to try and find that big fish on uh, tournament day. Uh, so there's definitely a lot that goes into the prep work. Uh, depending on locations where we go, a lot of times we'll use uh, mullet for bait and uh, you can't really conventionally catch mullet on a rod and reel. so. Uh, we have to break out the big cast nets and, and throw the net for bait. And depending on the area, sometimes you can, you can throw the net and get a whole mess load of them and fill the well and be on your way. And sometimes it's just a all day event of throwing the net. You know, you start throwing a 12 foot cast net all day, it gets to be a little tiring. So it definitely wears you out uh, during the day. And, but it's a necessary thing, you gotta have bait. So uh, you just grin and bear it and get it done. Well, coming from the west coast of Florida to the east coast of Florida uh, is an entirely different fishery. Um, luckily for me, I've, I've got some experience as I used to live on the east coast and, and fish these waters, but I haven't done it in a long time. So the team decided that we're going to stick to doing what we know best, and that's fishing near shore. And, um, you know, we're, we're able to read the beach and, and the fisheries around the beach areas uh, really, really well. And, so we were able to get out during our pregame bash for cash, uh, which was the first day we could get out that week uh, due to the weather. And uh, just by looking at uh, you know tides and weather conditions and wind direction and, and just what we were seeing as far as bait uh, gave us the indication that uh, we would be able to do fairly well uh, near shore. So we decided to uh, make the plan to do that and we stuck through it all week.
Team Old School is preparing for the first day of the SKA Nationals. They are coming into this event second overall in Division 6, first in the Lady Anglers Division, and first in the Senior Division. Watch out, get him in a boat. Help him. Nice. Yeah! After pulling in yeah! such a large kingfish and placing in the Mercury Bash for cash, they are certain to be a team that everyone is keeping an eye on to win this tournament. Welcome back to Intrepid Power Boats on the Water. When, anytime that we hire new employees, it's important that they understand what we're about. You know, Even if they've had other experience at other manufacturers, we ask that they check that at the door because we do things differently. So I even go and do the orientations with new employees to discuss why what's different about Intrepid Power Boats and why we do what we do because it's important that they understand that this is not like any other place they've ever worked. Um, for them to understand that the passion behind what we do and to be able to give them some kind of level of, of quality going into this is important. You know, I, I compare it to, you know, like if you're building a Lamborghini. You know, matter of fact, I had a quality control guy the other day, one of our QC managers come up to me and said, you know, there's this little tiny pinhole in a combing bolster that you really can barely see, you know, and it's a judgment call. And, and you know, I pulled him aside and I said, there's no judgment call to be made. I said, if, if, it's, if it's not 100% right, I said, we can't ship it. I said, if you had a Lamborghini and they said, eh, you just have a little pinhole in your seat, no big deal, what would you say? He said, oh, well, there's no way. I said, exactly. And there's no different here. You know, I said, Pull the bolster out, get it replaced. Um, the boat doesn't leave today. It's that simple, regardless of how important it was that it left. It's just what we do. You know, we don't skip any, uh, we don't take any shortcuts with anything that we do. This show has been brought to you by Langer Krell, Florida's longest running marine electronics dealer for over 45 years. Pompanet, defining excellence since 1948. Mercury, go boldly. Bennett Marine, the world leader in trim tab innovation, quality and service. This week's sea trial takes us back on the water with the Port of Tampa in their new Seaburn Intrepid. We've had the new Intrepid 40 with the triple Yamaha 350 V8 since uh, November of last year. It's performed fabulously, flawlessly. Haven't had a down day. Um, we're creeping up on uh, about 700 hours on it. We've done everything from Homeland Security escorts dive operations, numerous search and rescues with the, uh, the summer thunderstorms that have come in Tampa Bay. Uh, it's, it's such a great asset to the Sheriff's Office uh, Marine Unit. Uh, joined with our other 40, uh, the Seaburn boat is, is uh, second to none. We train a lot with the aviators. They'll deploy our divers. On occasion, we've had uh, uh, people missing and they'll pick up the divers right here and they can get on site quicker and then we'll do the maritime support from the water where aviation will go out and, and drop our divers in from about the, a 15 foot hover. It cuts down our response time, uh, allows us to get the search underway quicker and or hopefully a rescue versus a recovery. Uh, we also train uh, with this boat with the SWAT team. We've recently deployed them on some tactical situations that we've had on the water. Uh, the boat is well rounded. I mean, it has the capabilities of speed. It'll handle just about any weather that Tampa Bay can put out. We have the Seaburn equipment on board to provide the Homeland Security for Port Tampa Bay. 
elevated tower to see over the sea walls. Um, I could go on with the assets that are applied to that boat. People have reached out to me from across the country to ask how we did it, what's incorporated in the 40 Intrepid, how the performance has been, and I know there's numerous ports that are currently looking into building themselves a Seaburn boat based on the platform that we have here. All the best teams in the country are represented at the start of day one of the SKA Nationals. This is a two-day fishing tournament with the two-day aggregate taking home the title. Team Old School's strategy is to fish their strengths and stay close to shore using their fish finder and network of fellow anglers to locate that big smoker kingfish hanging out on the hard bottom fishing locations. Well, you're fishing a lot closer to land if you're uh, on the beach. Um, definitely a lot deeper, quicker over there, so you're fishing right up on the beach for the most part. Um, that was new and a little different. Uh, catching bait's a little different, you know, when it's not your hometown, it's a little tricky. You gotta make sure you definitely network more with people that you know and know where the bait is and try and find the fish. And, once you find the fish, you got to kind of just try and stay with them. Yes and no. You, you kind of give hints and you help certain people out that help you out. And you, you know, talk to people and network a little bit here and there. But for the most part, you try and keep a honey hole a secret if you've got one. If it's a big general known area and you happen to catch a fish there, you'll tell everybody. You know, it's just kind of, it's going to get out anyways. The bite turned on and they landed their first kingfish weighing over 30 pounds. Team Old School will be hitting the scales on day one with a really nice kingfish. Then did pretty well on our, our first actual uh, Nationals Day uh, with a 29 and then uh, just kind of had to weigh a fish our last day, weighed like a 20 or something. We wound up getting, I believe, 12th place out of the 150 votes. Hopefully we'll uh, get top of our division in the SKA. We came in second place this year, so hopefully next year we'll do first place. And we won our seniors and ladies uh, division six, so hopefully we can keep that going as well. Day two of the SKA Nationals is a beautiful morning. Bait fish are still scarce. Some 60 pound fish were brought to the scales on day one, so teams know it's going to take some huge kingfish to be in the money here at the SKA Nationals. Team Old School had a lot of sharks and barracudas. Late in the day, they landed another 30 pound plus kingfish, so they'll be bringing this into the scales on day two. This two day total lets Team Old School finish 12th place. Impressive for a new team. Saturday, we, we were working the same area. We made a couple stops, you know, checking out other areas on the way down, because our, our bite was better in the afternoon, so we knew we had a little bit of time to uh, experiment, you know, it doesn't hurt. And we fished some areas on the way down, and we got to our spot. Uh, we were catching fish. We just, uh, when, when everything changed and that major period came up late in the afternoon, uh, it really lit up. Uh, we had one fish come in and just totally missed the baits, and a lot of people had that same thing. Water condition makes it hard. Uh, then we got a good bite on a big, huge blue runner, and. Unfortunately, he went through the wire. Uh, ran 15, 20 feet. It wasn't much. You know, he was like chomping on it and took off. The minute he took off, we thought he just cut the bait and missed the hooks. So we dropped it back, of course, seeing if he'd come back to eat it. Then we pulled it in, and the uh, wire was cut between the uh, tow hook and the stinger. It bit through. <laughs> That's the ugly part of that. It really is fishing. But you know, we had a great tournament. Intrepid does such a great job for us. The boat ran perfect all weekend. Uh, you know, it was just, you know, a wonderful tournament. 
and a great experience. And out of uh, 114 boats, we came in 12th, and I'm proud of my whole team. They did a wonderful job. Next week on Intrepid Power Boats on the Water, we'll be in beautiful Naples, Florida, on board a new Evolution owned by Jack Bache, as he shows us how this high-performance sport yacht is changing the way people are boating in yacht clubs all over the country.